Everybody, man, it's been a while, hasn't it? So much going on. It's finally good to be back in front of you. I've been kind of getting my house in order, getting everything arranged. Still, things are just chaotic. I've been staying indoors because that is the prudent thing. And even if you don't um, believe what's going on out there, show some compassion, show some common courtesy, and just stay in. You know, a little bit of sacrifice right now is going to help us in the long run. But that brings me to today's topic. This lazy life lesson for today is actually probably not as lazy, but extremely important. And that is to vet your information. I go on Facebook and it drives me bonkers of, of how much misinformation is put out there. People are just posting things without second thought. And a lot of it is misinformation. But people put it out there and they're like, a friend of mine told me this, a friend of mine told me that. A friend of mine told me they were arresting people. A friend of mine told me, you know, they swear to God. Well, let me tell you a little story. A few years ago, um, a friend of mine told me, swear to God. She, she, was a, she knew a friend of hers who was a nurse. And there was a woman who had had a baby. And on the birth certificate, the woman had the name Shethayad put down on the birth certificate. She named her child Shethayad. And how did you spell that? S-H-I-T-H-E-A-D. And swore to God this was the truth. Now, it's funny. Don't get me wrong. You name your kid Shithead, that's pretty funny. In fact, probably for the first 10 years of my life, I thought my name was Shithead. Thanks, Dad. Anyway, so... This person told me this story, swear to God, right? In the following few days, I heard no less than four more times the exact same story from different places in the country. That's right. So the first one that told me this was a nurse near where I lived. One of them was in New York. Another one was in Texas. They were all over the place and they all swore. They all swore that these stories were true. Exact same story, but none of them were true. What baffles me is how easily we seem to buy into this without verification. Vet your sources. There's a lot of misinformation out there right now. People take it and run with it, and then they cause all kinds of problems. I watch, I, I read, and a friend of mine who I love dearly posted simply that the CHP she had heard that the CHP was impounding RVs or trailers. And from that in the comments section, you could see as it ramped up. It's unconstitutional. People live in their trailers. And it, it, it started to blow up when there was no validation. There was no verification. This was all just conjecture. And conjecture is when you make an assertion without any evidence. Look for evidence, especially in a time like this when we're dealing with um, such monumental issues. Now, here's the thing also is whether you believe this came from China, which it did in a wet farm, because that's how these viruses start historically in those situations, or whether you believe it came from somewhere else, really that's kind of irrelevant right now because we're, we're knee deep in it and we need to take care of business. And what that means is we need to take care of each other. All right? So part of taking care of each other is not just taking the ball and running with it if you don't know where it came from. You would not accept that in many areas of your life. You would just not accept it or run with it. Um, it causes strife. It causes fear. It causes panic. It causes uh, worry unduly and unnecessarily. So do your research, look things up. And if that were happening, and I did the research, if that were happening, I would have been able to find it in more than just that one post. So look up Snopes, look up um, Snopes.com. And I know there are people out there gonna say, well, Snopes messed this up. Okay, sure, look at the ratio. Okay, you can pick out the one or two things that people screw up on, but look at the hits versus the misses on this one. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of different sites, fact-finding sites. Look them up. Validate it. 
My dad happens to have a bad habit of posting memes from 10 years ago that no longer are valid, but also the stories were skewed to begin with. And then I have to make sure that I call my dad down. Maybe I shouldn't for all those years of calling me shithead. Hmm. Yeah, that's right, Pop. You got this one coming. All right. And uh, just to let you know, I'm still doing sessions. I'm doing my sessions online. Yes, absolutely. I can hypnotize you online. I just did a session before I recorded this. We can do havening online to deal with the trauma and the anxiety that we were going through. You're not alone. All right. So reach out to me. I've got you covered. Uh, also, real quick, tomorrow, April 1st, I'm going to be doing at um, with Coaching in Life, the Coaches of Coaching in Life, I'm going to be doing a uh, roundtable. We're going to be talking about coping mechanisms, how to transition to working from home, having the right attitude, proper nutrition during these times, uh, using healthy habits and whatnot. So take a look. I'm going to have the link to the Zoom meeting. You can come and join us. It'll be about an hour. We'll be taking questions in the forums. But head over to coachinginlife.com. Join. We've got like a year uh, free membership, and you can join up in the coaching forum. There's a password there and, and whatnot, and which I think I've said three times and whatnot. That's four. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. I've got your back. Together we've got this. We're going to get through this. Just wash your hands. You might as well wash your feet while you're at it. Might as well. I mean, you're probably not wearing shoes if you're quarantined. I'm not. All right, everybody. Until we meet again, inhale relaxation. Exhale tension. And be well.